This is Peter Boog, author of the best-selling book, Six Months to Six Figures, and founder of the prestigious Game Changers Academy, and welcome to the Game Changers Movement. Hello and welcome all you entrepreneurs, you uh, game changers and sales professionals to the Young Entrepreneur Lifestyle Podcast. I'm very excited for our special guest today, David Seitman Garland. And by the way, can I call you DSG? I got that from John. Oh, well, why not? <laughs> Let's simplify it. We'll t we'll t we'll, well, that'll cut down our time in half, I think. Today. Seriously, with your three three part name. Well, he's the creator of the Rise to the Top uh, and Create Awesome Online Courses. And he went from knowing nothing, literally zero about creating courses and programs to a million dollars in sales in just under 24 months. And he loves helping people turn their passion and expertise into profitable brands. I personally believe he's one of the best there is. You're humble, but I'm not when it comes to expressing people's real talents. Um, but Thanks, one of the man. biggest reasons I, I got him on this podcast and want to do business with him and connect with him is he is very good at creating lifestyle. And he has an amazing lifestyle himself. He's not behind a computer all day. He makes time for his wife, for his family. I didn't know you were such an avid sports fan. You do CrossFit. You're playing soccer. What else? I think there's hockey. Too. Softball, softball, softball. 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 I'm a big softball person. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's all about creating a business around your lifestyle, not the other way around. And we can definitely talk a and lot about that. Most people don't do that. Most people yeah. create a biz or a lifestyle around the business that they feel like they have to have. So we'll, we'll dive into sure. that. And What's exciting is in the last 12 months, you've done over a million dollars and you've launched multiple programs that have done six plus figures in different niches and you're making money while you sleep. But that's the after effect of adding value and really helping people not only build their ideal lifestyle, but inspire a lot of people as well. You're a family guy and our podcast is really about building life on your terms, your own way not letting other people run your agenda. And you're the pity of that, I think. And you're a family guy. And I'm excited to have you share your wisdom, man. So welcome. Well, awesome. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm excited to be here. And mm -hmm. I like being on video. This is so much fun. You know? Usually it's audio, huh? Yeah, video is a little it. more real. It's, it's, it's exciting, authentic. So I, I want to start with this because we had a great talk. I was in Tahoe. We talked for probably 45 minutes, I think a yeah, month or two ago. Least. And just your mindset's very similar to mine. Your, your attitude towards your family and what you're made to do is, is amazing. So let's talk about the importance to you of lifestyle and living life on your terms. And I'm, I'm just going to be very candid. I know you've turned down some big speeches that pay you big money yeah. that most yeah. people, David, would not turn. I'm not going to say the amount of money, but that's inspiring to hear you say, no, I'm good because you have the leverage. What's, what's the importance of lifestyle to you? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and what's interesting about lifestyle, and, and you know this as well, and everyone that's that's watching and listening to this, is that it's really a relative thing. It's what you want, and it's mm -hmm. also something that's very fluid. It's going to change. Do you know what I mean? Like what you're like in your early 20s is going to be different than late 20s and yeah. early 30s. And I don't know what happens in late 30s because I'm 31, but I'm sure <laughs> something else happens, right? And yeah. so, you know, over time, things change. And so for me, Here's kind of a pivotal moment uh, that was for me a long time ago was uh, when I met my wife, Marcy, you know, I was working almost 24 seven. That was pretty much what I was doing. I, I put on a little weight. I was kind of stressed out. Um, you know, I was just kind of locked to the computer. I remember we actually went on a trip to wine country and I remember I was like panicking and checking in all the time mm -hmm. with the business and it was stressful and it was stupid in, in a certain extent. And I said, you know what? This isn't going to happen. And at that time, I was doing stuff like uh, my main source of, of revenue was speaking. I was doing a daily podcast, which I'm sure you can understand oh. is stressful. <laughs> a daily podcast. Not weekly, but daily. Daily for like several years, Ooh. several years of doing this. And it just was starting to become a drain. And so from that point on, I shifted my business really through courses and other things. Not so that it's no work. It's yeah. not about doing no work. There's plenty of work. And the work is super fun right? But it's reclaiming your schedule and kind of doing the work, as you said, on your own terms so you can have time for the things that are important to you. So what kind of things are important to me? Well, number one, uh, family, you know, Same my wife, I have, yeah. a, I have a seven month old daughter uh, at the time of taping uh, of this, um, you know, sports, you know, I love sports. I love CrossFit. I love spending time with friends and family. Um, I love going on vacations, you know, traveling, things like that. Those things take a priority to me. Like, for example, I've turned, this is ridiculous when I say it out loud, but you're going to appreciate it, is that there was times where I've turned down a very large speaking 
gig because I had Wednesday night recreational hockey. Okay, I know that might sound awesome. ridiculous. Some people are sitting here like saying, "Well, that's insane." And I'm not saying you do that when you start out, but but you get to a point where you get to make the decisions as to what you love to do in your business and get rid of the rest. Oh, it's and it's it's hard to conceptualize unless you've been there. Same thing with me, Dave. I was working 70, 80 hours a week, and I started working 40 or 50, and I wasn't getting results. So if you go about based off society standards, if you're not right. getting the results, work harder. Worst myth ever, by the way. I agree. And that's dying. Right. But anyway, so yeah. I went up to 60 and 70 hours. And I was stressed out, struggling. And finally, when I learned how to create results, I was making good money, a, a mm-hmm. good six-figure income. I was 22, 23, but then I still had zero lifestyle. So right. once I prioritized, figure out how to scale and figure out what was important to me, that's when it started changing. Now I wouldn't change it for the world where you have leverage and you don't have to do anything, but you choose to. And that's so important. By the way, guys, he turned down a speech not for like four or five or six grand, uh, higher than that, just to give yeah, you guys it was an higher, idea. Yeah, it was higher than that. Yes. Yeah, a lot higher. So anyways, so I want to talk about focus too real quick. What are, what are some of your best things that you've done or some of your biggest perspective shifts to make, make sure you're focusing on one or two things that are your genius? We talked and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm not doing anything except blank and blank, period. That's right. So That's right. I love I that. that. That's true. Yeah. So when I was getting started and kind of definitely in the first like five years of business, somewhere around there, um, I was kind of, you know, hands were a, a million different focal yeah. points, a podcast, this and Most speaking. entrepreneurs are in that stage, by the way. For sure. And yeah. it's totally normal. This is not like an abnormal thing. And, you know, I, I, was, I wrote a book. I did this. I did that. And all these different things. And it was very hard to figure yeah. out where am I going to focus. As I got laser cut on what my business is, and at the end of the day, what our business is, it's about helping people create and sell online courses and some things off of that a little bit, but that's the core of it. It started as a very broad business that was kind of about entrepreneurship and interviews and things like that, and now it's laser cut, and the business is also 100 times bigger. But here's the thing. I only focus on a few different areas. Number one, I focus on you know generating leads, bringing in the right fit people for my products and programs, right? Number two is I focus on like live events, webinars, and trainings, which is – amazing. Number three, I focus on creating, I don't want to say valuable content because that's total cliche. Yeah. Really, it's about creating valuable uh, courses and training. That That's really kind of number three. And sort of number four is our marketing and our promotion campaigns. And if it doesn't fit into that, and that's really two to four things there, depending on how you But they're all very congruent. People yes. Really, they're all very congruent and next to each other and they all complement each other. Yeah. And it's a shame because it's not a shame. It's, it's a good thing, but I'm being probably more, more nice than I should be about it. But don't you, be. be you get a lot of different opportunities that come your way, right? And especially as you're around longer and longer, it's, it's a great thing. You get a lot of people, you know, say, well, what about this idea? Or what, what if you do this? Or, hey, I want to part with you. Let's do that. Or, or these things. I stay in my lane. <laughs> you know, I, I turn down a lot and it's not to be mean. I don't want to be mean to people about it, but it's just that I know where the success is in our business and where we need to focus and where I need to focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it gets sidetracked on another thing, it's not going to be anywhere as near successful as it has, has been and will be. So that's where I kind of think, okay, well, does it fall into one of those categories? Do you know what I mean? And, you know, my role has changed a lot over the years as well. Um, as you start to build a team and, and change, you know, kind of change things, you become more of a management role. So it, it's really been a big shift over the last, you know, seven plus years now in business. And you talked about too, and what, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is, You value your lifestyle, your freedom, your family, what you love, your time on this planet more than what others think of you. Hey, David turned down my speaking gig. Who cares? Right, right. And I think think when you start out and when I was starting out, you're – I didn't have, no one has a real clear path, right? Like you're trying, you think you do, but you never know. <laughs> um, and for me, when, when you're, yes, of course, your, your favorite word is going to be kind of yes. Mm-hmm. When you start yeah, out, yes, man. now I hate to say it, I'm, my favorite word is kind of no, right? It's kind of no to a certain extent. And, you know, but that's all about working smartly in the business. Just, just an example, we had a great vacation, went to, um, went down to Florida where, where my stepmom ha- uh, family has a condo down there and we went to uh, New Orleans and we went to all these different things and didn't do one lick of business anymore and felt zero bad about that. Or anxiety. And have, do you know what I mean? It wasn't like, you know, in the past or stuff like where you're like, well, you know, start itching and, and whatever. I remember one time I sent a email to 
um, one of my employees, Alyssa, and she's just like, what are you doing? Get off. It's fine. That's we awesome. got it. It's covered. What are you doing? Get back to the beach. And so, and it's not just about sitting on the beach and doing nothing 24 hours. I'm just talking about having it where you can structure what you want to do and what you want to spend time on. And I think this industry is blowing up because people are seeing the people that are doing it like you and people that have created courses, but they're not understanding there's a system or a framework that has to be mastered. And take back to go back to the days when you maybe had the aha moment or yeah. creating a, a company that helps people build courses. That's not normal. And you, I no. think you were ahead of the trend, like right. way ahead of the trend. Well, so it, what was the yeah. aha moment? And take us back to that time. Yeah, I'll tell you. It's actually a pretty interesting story just because it's funny when people ask me what I do. It's like at a cocktail party. It's like, well, let's grab a drink and sit down because it's going to be a conversation. This is not an elevator like This is not like a two-second thing. Yeah. But here's exactly what happened. And this is sort of the quick evolution and what the aha moment was, right? So when I started, I had a podcast, The Rise to the Top, and a web show and a podcast. And all I did was interview all these different types of entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? From the big ones to smaller ones to mom and pop shops to tech companies like Zappos to everything in between. And definitely by accident, I sort of uncovered this little mini world of what I now call mediapreneurs, trademarked. Um, mediapreneurs, uh, which were the Amy Porterfields of the world, the uh, uh, you know James Wedmores, the, these different people that were this really tiny subset of entrepreneurs, and what they were all doing was they were creating courses, they were helping people get results. And they had these like killer lifestyles and they were all different. Like some people wanted to stay home with their kids. Some people wanted to travel the world. Some people wanted to go out on weird dates. Whatever, whatever they wanted to do, they had the freedom to do this. And after interviewing so many different types of entrepreneurs, you know, some people were like, well, I'm making a lot of money. I'm doing well and I'm working 50,000 zillion hours a week and I want to shoot myself. I didn't want to be in that one. These people seem to kind of quote unquote have it all. And immediately I was hooked. I love this idea that you could help people, that you could take something you already know right now, package it up into something that could be sold, and also you could have a great income and life that goes with it. To me, I was like, well, this is this no is up my alley. You don't need 100 employees. You don't need a zillion dollars in overhead. This isn't anything like that. So I said, okay, I want to do this. So I went like a crazy person and I obsessed, right? Like a crazy person. And I found every little mediapreneur I could like dig up interviewed them, read anything they put out, bought anything they had, just research, research, and research for, you know, really a long period of time. And then I launched my very first online course. And it was terrifying. I, I, it took me way longer than it should have. All kinds of mistakes. It was called Create Awesome Interviews. That was my very first online course. And as you can imagine, after doing 500 plus interviews, that was kind of the common question back then. People were like, well, how do I interview Seth Godin? Or what, how do you know which questions to ask and how do you market and promote it and how do you make money from it? So I put that together into a system. No, again, very raw when I, when I was getting going here. First launch, Peter, of this very first product, okay, I had just 400 people on my email list and it did $19,800, okay? So very first launch. And I got to tell you, that's, we're not going to go you know, buy an island in Fiji uh, with $19,800, but for me, it you was life that proof. Yes, it was life changing confidence to be like, oh my God, I do have something that people want to learn. They're willing to pay for it and they're going to get results. And that course has grown and grown and grown. Uh, then it was, you know, 19,000, then it was 75,000, then it became 250,000. It went on and on and on. And from there, I started creating more products and programs. You know what I mean? This and that, experimenting and really, really honed and down. You stopped your podcast, right? Yes, actually, no. not yet, not okay, yet. Okay. So close, but yes, I'm, you're getting right to the to, to where it happened. So we started really the courses became the business, right? Like the courses were now the business. It was much more. We actually told a this this still is funny a six figure sponsor of the podcast that we're stopping the podcast. FYI, six figure sponsor that had been with me for several years. We're just like, you know. And you were making good money on sponsorships. Yeah, we were making top yeah. income source at one point. My top income source at the time <laughs> was six, six figures in sponsorships, yes. I love the and risk. So, and so, but what happened was, like, you just know. Like, it's one of those things, it's like, oh my God, this is what we're destined to do at this point in our, <clears throat> this is it. So we decided, okay, before we stop the podcast, 
we'd launched several things and then we said, you know what? Now the narrative has changed. It's no longer people saying, David, how do I interview people? The narrative has become, how do I do these courses? And now we've got it perfected. We've done hundreds of launches. We've done all these different things. We know exactly what it is, right? So, and by we, it was really royal. Well, I was case. real quick. I was very impressed when I talked to you. We, we spoke for 20 minutes during our hour call yeah. and you talked about all the testing you did, the trial and yeah. error, the experience, the masterminds you did with your team. I was like, this is down to a freaking yeah. science. It was. It became a science. It wasn't just like, let's just see what happens. Like at this point, we were becoming very predictable and very replicable. And that was what I was excited about. Because if it's replicable, I can teach you how to do it. Yep. Right? And so that's where Create Awesome Online Courses was born. And we did the initial launch of that that did, I want to say about close to 500,000 on that first launch. And then we started getting the, the feedback. And the feedback is not just like, hey, great course. This yeah. is fun. The feedback was like, I just launched and did 50,000. Yeah. I just launched Actual and did 10,000. I just launched and did 6,000. Like, like the numbers were, you know, I just launched and did 100,000. Whatever it might be, we started getting this momentum. And that's when I sat down. And I remember because my dad works full-time for the business. You know Maybe. that. But my dad, yes. He works full-time for the business. We sat down. I said, Dad, you know, this is going to sound crazy. But we're going to stop the podcast and we're going to focus entirely on courses. Oh, I mean, you had six plus million views, courses. by the way. Yeah, much. six million views. And, and, and in all honesty, too, another reason for stopping the podcast, we talked about this on the phone, but I, I want to relate this to people. I was also burnt out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I not. I was just kind of, I was kind of, it was kind of done. It was like the 90s. It was over. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it was like, th there was a point where I was just like, I just, I wasn't excited for it. Um, and... I want to be excited for what I'm doing in the business, you know, and I understand that in business, of course, there's things you're not going to be all that excited about that are necessary. But for me, this was just like, well, we're making a drastic shift. And I remember I called the sponsors and I was just like, and they were crazy. Our views were like this on an, a continued upswing. Sponsors were super happy. And I was just like, we're shifting our entire business tomorrow or not tomorrow. It was like, it was like next month or whatever it might be. And so starting, I think it was in... 2013, I got to double check on the dates there, but we took it a whole new route and that's when we became entirely focused on helping with people with courses and kind of some close things to that as well. So, so that's, the, that's the 10 minute story there. I, I want to go back though. I really want to dig deep here. Do you remember what the real turning point was? Did something really piss you off? Did you have a gut feeling? Did someone say something? Were you laying in bed like, I can't do this? What, did your wife get mad or something? Like, really? What Do you remember yeah. what it was? I think it was. Maybe you haven't shared it. I don't know. but No, you know, that's an interesting point. I mean, with the podcast, I think it was kind of a downhill thing for probably about uh, eight months where I wasn't – like for four years plus, I was super excited about it every day. And then the last year – you could just watch that I was almost making compromises. Yeah. It was like I took it down to three days a week. And then it was like, well, let's see if I can shoot all my interviews for the month yeah. in one day. And corners then, a little bit. I was cut corners for sure. Because I, and I just kind of like it was in my head just like I, I'm done with it. I had mm. fun with it. It was great. People loved it. Um, it was awesome. But I just got I got a shift. And I, I think though it wasn't like a negative moment where I was dreading stuff yeah. even though I wasn't as excited for the interviews as I normally would be. It was that really the launch of Create Awesome Online Courses. Took that over was, that excitement. That was the pivotal moment where it was like, this is what I want to do. And you got to realize that to the outside world that's not in this world at all, it's a little crazy because mm -hmm. realize what I did with my business was it was something that was very broad for the most part. You know what I mean? Like the, the, yeah. the, the, uh, you know, the fans of the show, all different types of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. younger, older, all different types of stuff. But now we're taking something that's like this and we're making it yeah. like this and we're laser cutting. And that can be a little scary because it almost seems like things are getting smaller when in reality, and you've heard this one before, there's riches and niches. Yeah. And we that is really when the business took off and we've doubled revenue every year since then. Do you know what I mean? Now it's 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 even higher than what you mentioned earlier. And now there's other stuff off that. We have a software company, there's different things going on. But that was a scary thing because I think – it's less interesting that, to tell people at a cocktail party. I'm just using that as a random example. It's less. Do you interesting like cocktail tell, parties? Not really, <laughs> but like, sometimes. Sure. Sometimes, but I'm saying like it's less interesting to tell someone, like 
we teach people how in my sometimes to the average person you know that we teach people how to create and sell online courses unless you get to the right person who goes bananas right yeah. which is what this business is all about versus telling people oh i do i have an interview show i do all these things then yeah. you, people are like super excited oh i write a book oh that's so cool now you're like yeah i'm in this little tiny laser world and but in that laser world we dominate it yep you know, and we've got a big following in that world. And that for me was a big shift in kind of how I'm perceived and how the business is. And I think that was that was key and, and, and honestly a little bit scary, you know? Well, there's a couple of very important lessons in that that I don't know if people caught. And we have some very dedicated uh, entrepreneurs listening, some 19, 20 year olds already making six figures. We've surveyed our listeners quite awesome. a bit and they're very driven. But you, when you're not fully engaged or you're dreading something or you burn out, a, you're not as creative, yeah. and B, it affects sometimes your outer world and your, your life oh, to where sure. it almost, you're dreading doing it like you said, but most people, if they already have results doing it, they still do it. Mm -hmm. So to be able to take that away yeah. and do something else was pretty extraordinary. And another thing that I've realized too, and tell me if you uh, got this or you've, it, you've had it happen to you, is when you get laser focused and you have something that you're proud of that is scaled, that is leveraged, you're way more creative to think oh, yeah. bigger and to have more and better ideas to execute on the things you're focused on. Have you yeah, realized uh, that? Yeah, I totally agree because it also, yeah. when you do a course, when it, once you get your course done and you get it out there and you get it launched, it's like you, you have this infinite world of possibilities oh, of things you can creative, do. You're creative. You, know, yeah. you can do promotions. You can do what, what add-ons would make sense with this. Who could I partner with that could offer a service that might be related? Like it's, <clears throat> and then there's long-term things and short-term things. So if you're a creative person, you know, I've got long-term things like Facebook ads. Let's use an example. Example, that someone else runs I don't worry about it he offers for my my some thoughts I give him some thoughts sometimes great we deal with it that's a long-term thing but if this week if, if like when we're done with this I'm just like you know what I want to run a promotion <laughs> of some kind something I could come up with something and execute it today yep right if need be that's the kind of leanness that you get with this. So it's great for a, a creative person that's like, you know what? I do want to come up with something creative to do this week. And it's also good for people that are like long term, like let's just set this kind of on autopilot sequence and go for it. It's great for both ways. So yeah, for me, you know, it, it really was kind of a game changer. And my, and my wife, who's very kind of What's a nice way to put it? She says she's a realist. We could put some skepticism in there. That's what she says too. And I love it because we balance each other out. But she's always said that what she appreciated kind of about this business is that kind of the willingness to pivot. Yeah. You know, when needed. And, and I think too many people, and that goes back to your original point here, kind of go down with the ship. Um, whether it's financially, mentally, yeah. mentally, uh, lifestyle, whatever it might be. And for me, yeah, there's, you have to identify the difference. And this is a key lesson for young entrepreneurs. You have to identify the difference between like a rut or a bad day <laughs> or even a bad activity that you're, you're like, oh, well, I just don't want to balance the books today if that's yeah. what you're doing, you know, whatever it might be versus long term is this something I really want to change and go that direction and that's something that really kind of comes down to gut and experience over time and you know what not every call you're gonna make is gonna be correctly correct not every call I've made has ever been to correct um, but having that willingness to, to shift and change um, I think can be you know has been critical for our success for sure and you have to to thrive in this new economy one question I like to ask myself every once in a while is is this going to keep me fascinated and engaged the next right. couple of years? And if it's not, why are you doing it? Right. And when you realize that there's endless possibilities to make money and you have no limitations on that in the entrepreneurial world and you've increased your certainty, you can pick and choose what you want to do, which is yeah. exciting as well. So let me ask you this and then we'll, uh, we'll get off. This is a little longer than normal. We're going to kind of put two episodes into one because you have such cool. great value that I think could help a lot of people. Where have you seen entrepreneurs, um, people that – have wisdom to share. They could be making more money than they're making now in way less time if they shifted their perspective. Where have you seen entrepreneurs, they've been mess up over and over and over again? Well, yeah, I mean, specifically in sort of my industry, which let's just call it, I, I don't like the word expert industry, but yeah. I think that's one way of looking guru, at it. Or guru, I don't like that yeah, word either. Oh, guru is the word, we're not even, we got, I'm, a, I'm just a little nauseous. But, <laughs> um, but, but here's the thing about this industry. What I really mean by that are personal brands, um, experts, uh, bloggers, 
podcasters, people that have an online platform, coaches, consultants. Let's just put it all into that lump of category, right? If, if that's really my industry, right? And so where I see people kind of struggle is it really does come down to not having leverage in their business and just simply trading time for money yep. or not controlling the revenue. So let me give you a couple examples. Time for money, all, all cliche stuff. Speaking, and I'm not saying this stuff's bad. It's just that if you're looking to build long-term stuff over time, you got to have stuff that works for you when you're not there, yep. right? Bottom that's line. That's how you build a lifestyle. There's no other Bottom way. line. Absolutely. So because one-on-one -on -one coaching, well, how many people can you possibly coach? right? Small group coaching. Well, how often can you possibly do that? Speaking, how often can you do that? And if you also look at it this way, how, how big can my message get that way? Well, pro let's see, even if you're speaking 50 times a year to a thousand people, that's huge. Let's say it's 50,000 people. Well, with a leveraged online program, you can reach 5 million. I mean, you could reach unlimited amount of people while you're with not there. While you're not there, exactly. While you're at home, like for me, a big thing for me, I don't want to travel everywhere and and be leaving my wife and daughter. That's just my thing. Do you know what I mean? So one thing is not thinking leverage in their business in terms of time. The other one is not controlling the revenue. So kind of if you're a podcaster blogger, let's just use that as an example. When I was in business, I was making you know six figures uh, with, with the podcast, and was still slightly scared to death because I didn't control the revenue. It was controlled by sponsors. That wasn't my, so meaning someone could wake up on the wrong side of the bed and say, you know what, we're not gonna sponsor you guys anymore. That could be a huge revenue hit overnight because you don't control the revenue. They're not your customers. You're essentially sending people out to other people, right? And not saying that that's bad in general, but that shouldn't necessarily be the basis of your business. And that's where a lot of podcasters get into trouble and, and things like that as well. So, so from the coaching consulting side and then the podcasting kind of blogger expert personal branding side, the control of the revenue and the leverage is the biggest thing you could do. Because the cool thing about an online course, and someone asked me this um, it was a few weeks ago, was like, okay, you've got one revenue generator. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I said, there is without a doubt, it would be an online course oh, because of course without a doubt because the other nice thing about it is that you you put a lot of effort up front you put a lot of effort up front you put it together you know and obviously you can update it over time for sure absolutely if you want to update stuff that's great but it's an asset once you have it created you have an asset it's not like going on to your next client and now all right, you're having our one hour talk and now, okay, well, I have to get another client. It's not like that at all. This is do the work up front. It's done. Now you can do a lot of different things to promote it, to enhance it, to do special special stuff with it later on. You know, I know people that are customers of mine making money every day from courses that haven't really been touched in three years. You know, they're not out of date. I'm saying they can update them when they want to, but I'm saying that, you know, the courses are an asset that you can create and then create income for a long, long time about it. And, you know, there's people out there um, that have based and created seven figure plus businesses on one major course. And I think that's one of the incredible ways to also look at it. That's huge. So lastly, what's your favorite, give me a couple examples of courses that you've seen be really successful that no one would think would be successful. Like maybe some funny ones or, cause people don't think they yeah. have expertise and you yeah. would not believe uh, the people, what they could really get sure. out there if they had some confidence. So give me, give me some funny examples. Sure. And I love this cause I hear these all the time. So I get, I get <laughs> students coming to me all the time telling about stuff that, that blows my mind. There's one that sticks out. Uh, that was pretty funny. And her, um, her name is uh, uh, Kim, right? And her course is on equestrian Tai Chi. Equestrian Tai Chi. I still, for the life of me, cannot tell you what equestrian Tai Chi. It's either you're doing Tai Chi on the horse, the horse is doing Tai Chi on you. I don't really yeah. know. It's, it's something like that. But the bottom line is she's like the number one expert wow. in equestrian Tai Chi in this little niche. And she sells, of courses. They're about uh, $500 on this. And she has built quite the living off of equestrian Tai Chi. Just goes to show you that, that there's a lot of different ways out there to, to really, really build a niche. Now, here's one that's not as funny, but just sh shows you how crazy. I like the funny is, ones. <laughs> yeah, this, one, this one's one that's just a lesson in that more specific is always going to sell better. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just recently had, and this was this year, the biggest first time launch of one of my students, biggest first time launch ever. And it was, uh, I believe 300,000 plus 
on a, on first time launch. Tell and people it was, what a, real quick. A launch is when you bring your product to market, you sell it, and that's how much you sell. Just so everyone exactly. Knows. So a launch is a finite period. That's a great point, Peter, because not everyone knows about that. That's a great point. I'm th I'm too insider baseball here. So so here's the thing. A launch is when you release your product. And there's a finite time that people can purchase it. Usually with special bonuses, there's different, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, but there's a finite period when people can purchase and then it closes and then there's a lot of stuff you can do from there. Uh, but bottom line is we always call those the VIP launch. It's the very first launch of things. And you know what? You can make a thousand dollars and that's awesome. You can make a few thousand and get that confidence going. And then there's people that have done much more than that. But Mark Dawson did 300,000 plus. Um, on his first launch, and it was Facebook ads for authors. Wow! And what I love the law, the the kind of saying that why it's not as funny, but what's interesting about it is that it's so specific. It's so specific, and that's one of the big tips there. If you're thinking about doing a course, more you can laser cut down to something specific, the more successful it's got a chance of being. I love it. That's awesome. And I've seen people that are in your course. I've actually took your course. Help me do a six-figure launch, and what I love about what you bring is your very uh, no theories, no fluff, no hopes and dreams, n nothing that you read in a book yesterday that you're promoting. Hey, I read this once. This is all from you being in the trenches, you being stressed out, you switching industries, and you actually doing all the research and adjusting and adapting, which I love. So, and, and for me, DSG, I truly understand the importance of building a lifestyle that's scalable and not trading time for money and making sure that what you're doing now is creating free time for your future. And I think the bottom line too is not having any regret. I know yeah. 30, 40, 50 year olds that they can't do what they want and someone else is telling them what they're worth. And I get, I freak out when I think about that because if they had an open mind, they could change that and they could start creating something that can outlast them and that can be yeah. evergreen and is a legacy based as well. So I was very excited. I asked David probably, what, a month ago, David, to, to yes, do a live right. training because I know for a yeah. fact the people that we have listening and watching this YouTube video and on the podcast, they're, they're very hungry for knowledge and they love investing in themselves and they want more information. I don't think you gave enough about how to create courses. No, I want to go deeper. So for sure. I asked you to do a training yeah. for those I impact and – I wanted you to talk about the very specific, it's a seven step proven uh, process to create, promote, and profit from online courses. And even if you've never sold anything before, like your guy that did 300,000, you teach exactly how to do it. So can you talk about a couple things that you're gonna go through on that training? I'm very excited to have you again and have people live on with us. So what are, what are some things you're gonna discuss? Yeah, for sure. And, and that's a great point because we talked about like, well, we're going to do our podcast today. How can we go even deeper, yeah. right? How can we go even deeper and walk people through what to do? So on this training, which which you mentioned is called Seven Steps to Creating, Promoting, and Profit from Online Courses, here's some of the key things. So obviously, duh, as we just said, uh, we're going to go through the seven-step process. So we're going to explain every single thing. Like you just mentioned- And you it's know, deep we, dive. I want people to know it is oh yeah, pretty deep, deep dive. dive. So for, for example, we just talked about, you're like, well, what's a launch? Let's talk about that. Yes, that's one of the one of the key steps. We're going to dive into exactly what we mean by that, mistakes to avoid, all that kind of good stuff we're going to go through on the webinar. We're also going to go through, so here's the cliche thing, not my first rodeo. I've taught thousands and thousands and thousands of students all over the world, and I know where people get hung up. I know where people have issues, and I want to help. I want to make it where you don't make the mistakes that I did. You know what I mean? Or other people have done in the past. I want you to come out there with a complete plan. So one thing we're going to go over is we're going to go over this one question survey that's going to have your peeps, whoever your peeps are, tell you exactly what they want in your online course. So we're going to go through that. We're going to go through the secret to pricing and positioning your course. And this is a key one because a lot of people, that's a common question. Well, I don't know how much to sell it for. And a lot of people undercut they undercut how much they should be selling their course for. And we're going to talk Based about their limitations. Right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I'm going to share with you how to find the exact perfect price, the secret to that. We're going to do that on the webinar training. Um, we're also going to go through, and this one makes me cringe a little, but it's going to be good, uh, is that we're going to go through the biggest marketing and promotion mistake you can make. And I see this made all the time, and I just want to wipe it right out of your memory. And we're, it's not going to be one of those trainings where I'm like, well, here's the mistake, now good luck. 
No, we're going to tell you what to do. I'll tell you what to do instead so that you don't make that mistake and you can avoid that. We'll go through that. We'll do some Q&A. Uh, it's going to be an oh, absolute good. So blast. you'll hang out for Q&A too? Absolutely. We'll be doing live Q&A. We're going to be there. Um, you know, you've got questions. If you want to, I'll tell you another fun thing, Peter, for, for your peeps. If they want to come and bring an idea and, and get my feedback from it, we'll do that in the Q&A too. So we'll do some hot seats. Um, it'll just be an absolute blast and it'll all be going down live. And that's exciting. And I'm honored to have you, man. And I often say, and it's changed the game for me, that one or two perspective shifts or one or two different action plans or a different way of thinking can yield an extra 50 to 100 plus thousand dollars and a whole new lifestyle for you and your business. But you have to be open-minded as well. And I will tell people, I assure you, there will not be a better training that could shift your thinking at a higher level and help you build a legacy with what you do and not trade time for money. So I'm excited about that. And go to createawesomecourses.com to sign up or the links below as well. And I'm very excited, man, to have you on there. I think it's going to be fun and we'll just go back and forth. And I really want to teach people because I've seen it change the game for me and what you taught me. This is not me hoping or guessing based off hearing everyone say how good you are. This is you actually taking me through the seven steps and helping me get a six-figure launch with my product as well and I was confused on some things but you took all that overwhelm away and I had absolute crystal clarity and that's what I want to give people before they have a lot of regret and before they're doing things that are their business is running them so that's kind of what I want you to talk about so I'm excited man. anything else to say as far as the, the training goes no it's gonna be a blast and I think the way to look at it is just that I wish I had this shortcut when I started you know what I mean like when I started I had to interview all these people I had to do all this research I had to like I was like the mad scientist in the laboratory, like, let's pour this in, let's see what happens. This is the results of all that so that you don't have to deal with that. You could just come in for, you know, an hour and a half here, hang out with us, <laughs> learn a ton of stuff. And so it's, it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting a lot of people there. I think that's a nice virtual, we'll get some virtual high fives and, and fist bumps when we're there. I love it. And I promise you guys it will fill up quick. So I know most of you guys are action takers and the type that aren't just the talkers, but the doers. So sign up below ASAP, reserve your spot. We look forward to hanging with you. DSG, I really appreciate your time, man. And all the wisdom you shared. You're definitely someone that is building a legacy and becoming the best at what you do. So much respect to you, man. Let me know how I can help in any way as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Peter. This is great, great questions and, and looking forward to connecting with everyone. All right, we'll talk soon.